Welcome back, Bikeaholics. Thanks for tuning in. I am Ryan Erlacher with LawAbidingBiker.com, your high-tech redneck. Due to popular request, I'm finally getting this video done. Also, we're going to talk about, about it on our weekly podcast. If you haven't checked our weekly podcast out, make sure to do so. We talk about a ton of stuff like this and give a ton of information to uh, law-abiding bikers out there, the motorcycle majority. Anyways, today we're going to talk about the EITMS. That's the Engine Idle Temperature Management System that came on Harley-Davidson models. Um, we know that the Harley-Davidson motors, for the most part, are air-cooled. They are starting uh, in 2014 and 2015 to come out with some water-cooled. But there's many, many years that had the EITMS on them. There's a way to enable that and uh, disable it. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about what the engine uh, idle temperature management system is. Uh, for those riders who frequently find themselves, you know, riding in conditions like, uh, you know, traffic jams, in hot weather, in parades, just, you know, in, in when the temperatures are really high and you're, you're doing a lot of idling and that kind of stuff, um, the engines can get real hot. And so, Hardy-Davidson put this EITMS to help management uh, or help manage that heat uh, to dissipate it from the engine. So, when the engine temperature, when the engine idle temperature management system uh, is engaged, uh, when the motorcycle reaches a predetermined point, the EITMS will turn off the rear cylinder on the motorcycle guys um, at idle speed and uh, it will turn off basically the rear fuel injector. The idle speed will be maintained, however, uh, the rear cylinder will become an air pump at that point um, to help cool that cylinder. So when will EITMS activate and shut off your rear cylinder? Under any of the following conditions, guys. When your engine reaches a temperature of 284 degrees Fahrenheit or 140 degrees Celsius. Uh, when, you, when the twist grip, when you, they call that the throttle, uh, when it's at idle. So when the bike's at idle, it uh, will activate. And also engine speeds under 1200 RPM. And so on the opposite side of that, the EITMS uh, will disable and the rear cylinder will fire again under any of the following conditions, guys. Your engine temperature falls, or excuse me, falls below 275 degrees Fahrenheit, 135 degrees Celsius. Your twist grip, so your throttle, uh, is above idle. So as soon as you take the bike out of idle and give it a little gas, it's gonna disable. The vehicle speed exceeds two miles an hour or three kilometers an hour. Um, and the clutch is released with the vehicle and gear. So any of those conditions are met, the rear cylinder fires back off and uh, you're good to go. Couple things I wanna tell you guys about when the EITMS is activated and that rear cylinder is shut down, you may notice a uh, difference in the motor cadence. It's gonna feel rough and, and you'll definitely notice that I do. Also, you may uh, notice a unique exhaust odor. These conditions are all considered normal um, when the EITMS is activated, so don't freak out. Also know that the EITMS settings will remain in effect until they're changed by you, the rider. So you don't have to set it each time you start the bike up. If you have it set so that the EITMS will activate under those conditions I mentioned, then it's gonna do it all the time. You're gonna have to go in the motorcycle here and I'm gonna show you how to do that and disable it um, and then it will never activate it if you have it disabled. So real world guys, if you're asking me, I live in a climate where it gets very, very hot up to 100 degrees in the summers. I do ride around town. We rode in California this summer. We were in some traffic jams, congestion and things like that. My advice to you is make sure your EITMS is enabled. Um, it's just a, a, a safety precaution when you're in that really uh, hot weather and you're at idle speeds a, lot, a, a long time. It gives you the ability uh, to have that rear cylinder you know, act as that air pump and shut off that fuel injector. It's gonna help cool your engine. You can cause damage to an engine if you were sitting for a long extended period of time in extreme heat and idle temperatures. So the bike is equipped with it, why not just use it? Um, the only time I really turn it off is in the, in the winters here. It gets really, really cold and you know, I'll be riding in 16 degree weather and things like that. I'm not in traffic congestion and all that kind of stuff. And I actually want a little bit of extra heat off that engine because it feels nice. Um, and I'm not really worried about the engine overheating, but for the most of the time, and even in the winter, if you wanted to leave it, it's really not gonna matter. It's only gonna activate when it needs to. I will tell you a little bit, uh, a, a trick I do. Um, you're gonna notice when you stop and the bike's idling, even when it's like 60 degrees out, when it meets those certain criteria, it doesn't have to be hot for it to meet those criteria. 
it's going to go ahead and activate. Um, and what a little trick I do is I uh, at stops I noticed when you're actually uh, um, you know at an intersection and you're getting ready to go, you're going to feel that engine and you're going to feel it's running a little bit of rough. You can just let the clutch out and go ahead and go from there. But one thing I like to do is go ahead and grab the throttle a little bit and I'll give it just the clutches in and I'll give it just a little bit of throttle and I'll get it out of that EITMS state. And uh, it seems to make for smoother takeoffs when you're taking off and you're letting that clutch out. You don't have to, but again, clutch in a couple revs. I get that gas going. I usually do that anyways. And then I go ahead and take off from the intersection. You'll feel it come out of the EITMS. Also on these newer models with the boombox system, which I have on here, a 2014 Street Glide Special, I can actually hit the uh, information up here. There's an information on the right control cluster, an information button, a toggle, and I can hit that and it will actually show me on my boombox screen when the EITMS activates. So when the engine goes into EITMS, it will actually tell me it's enabled. With that said, let's go ahead and get right into, I'm gonna show you uh, how to enable the EITMS. So when those conditions are met, uh, it's going to go ahead and, and disable that rear cylinder. I'll also show you if you don't want it to do that ever, I will show you how to disable the EITMS. Quick break guys, we'll get right back into the video. I hope you're enjoying this free video. We put out a ton of free content here at lawabidingbiker.com. We also have a, a, a bit of for purchase. We have the weekly podcast. Uh, we really appreciate your support. If you want to support us and you like this content and it's useful to you, head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon for less than a price of a coffee a month. You too can support us. There are some benefits that you get, a private Facebook group, and we all help each other out and stuff like that. Or you can just donate if you want, lawabidingbiker.com slash donate. If you want to see all the free videos we have, lawabidingbiker.com slash free videos. We have a ton of stuff over there. Get involved. Check out the weekly podcast. Thanks for all your support. Let's get back to the video. So the first thing you want to do is just find your ignition switch. Now there's a couple different ways to do this to get started with the process of an enabling or disabling the uh, EITMS system. Now, as far as we know, this goes back to at least 2008, maybe even earlier, but at least 2008 and up models. Um, we've tested it on, on the different models and most of the models, you just simply turn it to the running position, to the ignition position, and you go from there. And I'll show you the rest of the steps. If that doesn't work, there are a couple bikes we found that you actually have to have the bike running to do it. So if this doesn't work, just putting it to the ignition position, then go ahead and fire your bike up and then try enabling or disabling the EITMS. But we're gonna go ahead, just leave it in the ignition. This bike actually does it. The 2014 Streetlight Special will do it running, it will do it in the ignition or even the accessory position. So, um, very easy to do with the 2014, but try those combinations. So the first thing you want to do on the 2014 and on models with the boom box is go ahead and on your left control cluster, hit the information button on your screen. That's gonna bring up your air temp, your oil pressure, and it's gonna bring up your EITMS and uh, tell you whether it's enabled or disabled. So to enable it, we wanna go ahead and grab the throttle. We're just gonna rock forward and hold it until the EITMS says enabled, all right? And it would be enabled if we wanted to disable it so it would never go on or never activate it under the specific conditions. We would just hold it forward again and it takes about five seconds. And there we go. So of course on your other models that have EITMS, you'll want to uh, look at your gauges in your, for your cruise control light. Same thing though, you hold it forward for five seconds and you'll see that green light go on on your uh, cruise control indicator on your gauge and that means it's enabled and then if you do it again and hold it for five seconds you'll see that it turns orange and that means it's disabled orange or red so there's a normal idle there you can see the eitms just kicked in starts idling a lot different, a lot more vibration in the motor because that one rear cylinder is kicked off. EITMS 
And I just want to tell you real quick here at lawabidingbiker.com, we use every resource we can uh, to try to get this stuff done and out to you guys. Very proud of my nine-year-old daughter here, Sian. She takes care of a lot of behind the scenes stuff. She's behind the cameras and the different shots. Uh, she's becoming a very good videographer. She's learning how to edit stuff. So very proud of Sian. I wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes here at lawabidingbiker.com. Are you f kidding? Sorry, honey. Sorry. <laughs>